All right, so today is Monday, October 9th, 2023. My name is Grace Park, and I am interviewing Ling Yun Chen on behalf of the Houston Nation American Archive at Rice University. Um, so first, I'll be asking you a few questions related, related to your um, childhood and your early life. Um, so when and where were you born? I was born in Tianjin, China. So Tianjin is a big city in north, uh, just next to Beijing. Um, when, right? So August 1st, 1994. I see. Um, and how would you describe your like childhood and adolescence years? Yeah, I uh, grew up in a Christian family. Uh, so I'm the fifth generation, uh, which is kind of unique uh, in China. So my uh, grandfather's grandfather, great-grandfather, so he went to uh, Princeton University, got a theology degree, and went back to my hometown, uh, Tianjin, and be the uh, first Chinese pastor. So I think um, it's, it's a blessing for our family. So my grandmother's played at church, um, and I play, I grew up church, I play at church. Um, mm -hmm. So... That's why um, I love playing piano or organ at church. Mm. So. Oh, that's great that you had a very like natural and early exposure to it. Um, and next, I wanted to ask, um, what are some of like the special holidays, traditions, memories, or experiences that you remember growing up? Um, in terms of the culture or... Um, yeah, it can be about anything. Oh, okay. Um, I think I grew up in a loving family and, you know, it's a very um, Christian-centered, I would say. So I think, um, like, the teaching at church is really impacting me a lot. And that's why I uh, have been serving at churches um, since I came to America um yeah i see um and then next could you tell me uh, what your parents occupations were and what were some of the like values and lessons that your parents instilled in you yeah so my mom uh is an english teacher uh in elementary school so actually she uh helped me a lot in preparing tofu exam which is a in english exam for international students um, and my dad uh, worked in office as customs, uh, so he uh, worked uh, worked on statistic stuff. Um, so I think uh, they love music. They sung in a choir, but just I'm a amateur. But I remember I grew up, you know, like um, they love listen to music. Um, so, yeah. Nice. That's very sweet. Um, what was your favorite subject in school and what were, um, some of your aspirations or, um, if you had any, like a dream career as a child? My favorite subject, definitely, definitely not math and <laughs> physics. I think I love, um, art in general, like, painting class or music class and I, I remember I love um, English yeah I was the um, class representative for that for, for the English class so I, I felt like okay it's not too difficult for me to learn <laughs> um yeah mm, I see what did you like about like the subject of English the subject um I remember we had textbooks that cover all kinds of subjects. So I remember um, I back then uh, there were no there was no um, electric dictionary. So I just have a big dictionary and I look up all the words in the textbooks. Um, yeah. I see. Um, and next to ask a couple of questions about um, like your immigration, um, could you tell me when and where you first moved to the States? Yeah, I moved to States when I was 18 uh, for college. So um, by myself. Yep. 
I see. Um, what was it like when you made that initial move? And were there any cultural shocks or any um or the biggest challenges? Um, I would say my parents are very open minded, so they actually encourage me to uh, go abroad and then see the world, see different things, see different cultures. So th it was very exciting to me. Um, and I moved to New York City when I was 18, so I stayed in New York City for eight years. I went to Manhattan School of Music, um, stayed there for eight years, and then moved to Houston three years ago. Um, I think for culture shock, um, well, language probably is part of it. It's not culture shock. It just, you know, talk to Americans is totally different than learning English in a foreign country. Um, culture, culture shock probably just like the amount of sugar I can consume. <laughs> Yeah, but somehow I got used to it. Probably it's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely lots of sugar used here. <laughs> um, and next, uh, I wanted to ask a question, a few questions about um, like your early education slash career. So, um, when and how did you initially start playing the piano and or the organ? Yeah, I played the piano since I was seven and a half. Um, in China. Now I've been playing the piano since then. So in New York, um, I was piano major for six years, so bachelor's and master's. Um, I took a organ class on my senior year in college. So actually I started the organ fairly late. Um, so I start from zero and then I really like that class and then I talked to a teacher, hey, can I be the organ major? And then like the teacher was, was helping me and I prepare like the audition repertoire for probably two years, but on and off. Um, and then I took the audition and then got my second master's in organ performance. Um, I switched to organ just because I love sacred music, church music. Um, there's rich repertoire um, for a choir or for choir and organ. So I just love those repertoire. I see, that's amazing. Um, and then next I wanted to ask, um, were there any like defining factors or moments that led you to um, kind of definitive, definitively decide that you would like to pursue music? Um, I think the decision was fairly late uh, during my high school no, right before high school. So before um, the teachers were like, okay, she, I might be able to, you know, be professionals. But um, back then, you know, the music school just mainly focused on music, but not um, academic classes. So my parents was like, okay, probably this is not a good idea because they think, you know, you study the music also, um, academic classes Th those are important so I just went to a regular uh, middle school and then um, I think it was because of competition like my mom was like okay maybe she can be a professional <laughs> so basically I won the, the original competition and then the competitor were um, music majors but I was not music major so so she was like, okay, maybe you have potential and, you know, music is fun, more fun to, you know, get into high school and, you know, study because, you know, in China, the, um, uh, the uh, you know, the academic burden is very heavy. So if you enter a regular high school, so... Yeah, for sure. Um, and on a related note, um, since you started playing music at such a young age, how would you say like your childhood and adolescence years kind of differed from those childhood years of um kids who weren't pursuing music? Um, I think I just enjoy playing the piano. I don't think I was 
stuck in the room. I think I I was just a regular child. Um, like I went to swimming lessons, skating, skating lessons. So music is I think it just somehow natural to me or practice on the piano is is I I was not crying or my my parents didn't force me at all. So yeah, I see. Uh, and then next to talk a bit about like your college and higher education experience. Um, and I think you briefly mentioned this, but how did you come to attend um, specifically the Manhattan School of Music? And could you describe like your undergraduate and graduate years there? Mm -hmm. So I think I've applied probably 10 schools for college. Um, I think there were I can remember several schools to choose from. Um, I think the reason I chose Manhattan is because uh, the location is in New York City and New York City is perfect for art majors, you know, go to see concerts, operas, uh, museums. So I think the artistic atmosphere is very important. Uh, my college there, I think I would say great like I think the most impressive thing I remember like um, each lecture is different each lecture is on um, a different subject so you just like overwhelmed by knowledge um, and I remember the first two years I um, had to use a recorder to record each lecture um, and then borrow notes from my roommate she's super nice um, so just listen back to each lecture and write down the notes. So, um, the first two years were tough, but the third year got better. Yeah, it was very exciting. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, and so kind of building on that, how would you say your like musical interests, perspectives or mindsets kind of evolved throughout your four years of undergrad? music perspective yeah so yeah um like your interests perspectives or anything related to music how would you say you kind of like grew or developed over the years well i think in every aspect um i remember i took music theory class so it just made me uh thought a lot about like what does theory mean like because some student they don't like theory at all um so i think i thought that thought about that a lot i just feel like okay music theory is the foundation for everything um and let's see i joined a choir there there was a big choir um it was a lot of fun to sing with um the sym symphonic orchestra um and Piano lessons were great. My piano teacher was um, Philip Kaywin. Um, yeah, he's just a brilliant teacher. Yeah, like he he taught me. Okay, what does the music should sound like? But also he taught me how to do it. So I think that's very valuable. Um, some teacher they just tell, okay, that should sound like that, but how to achieve that? Um, they don't usually teach um perspective i think in all aspects so it was um a very comprehensive i think the the curriculum there yeah that's great um and then kind of building on to the piano professor that you mentioned um did you have any professors mentors or other fellow students who left a significant impact on your life yeah, for music major, definitely our major teacher is the most important. So uh, Professor Philip Kaelin, um, who else? Um, my first organ teacher, uh, Dr. Katie Malone. Um, she um, helped me a lot in preparing auditions. Um, also my organ teacher for a master's degree, Dr. Andrew Henderson. Um, I mean, they are all different, but somehow 
the timing in my study is perfect because each teacher has their own strengths. So um, I think the, the timing was was great. So I think I'm grateful for um, their efforts. Mm -hmm. For sure, that's amazing. Um, and then I wanted to ask about um, how your experience has been at the Shepherd School of Music. Um, so mm -hmm. what kind of drove you to pursue a DMA in organ performance at Shepherd? Um, and how has your education been kind of different from what you experienced at the Manhattan School of Music? Yeah, um, I feel like two years uh, as organ major was not enough at, at Manhattan School of Music because there's a huge repertoire. So I felt like I do have the passion to pursue DMA degree, but mainly just performance and learn a repertoire. So that's why I apply a bunch of schools um, for the degree. Um, I got into Shepherd, I think uh, Shepherd is perfect in every way. So I felt I was very lucky. So um, so the teacher is great. I think teacher is the most important. So um, Professor Ken Cowan is just, um, really great teacher um, and also um, I like small studio uh, right a shepherd is a small school and we have great instrument and you know great stipend and scholarship so and then at that time I was very tired of New York City after eight years so I felt like I do need a you know change so Houston is um, perfect so, yeah, it's not too crazy like New York. And um, what's the second question? Oh, what's the difference? I think Shepherd is because it's a part of a uh, university, so it's definitely more challenging than music school. Yeah, like um, music history department, musicology, like everything is high standard. I feel like Shepherd is really a place to train uh, teachers rather than students. So, yeah. I see. Um, that's great that you kind of had, you were able to receive that needed change in your environment and setting. So that's great to hear. Um, and then my next question is, I saw that um, you're currently a teaching fellow at the Shepherd School of Music. Um, so I just wanted to ask, um, how has it been, what has, like, what is it like to interact with um, non-major students and kind of share your musical knowledge and experiences with them? Yeah, actually, I'm not anymore. Oh. Um, I was, I, I think I should update my resume. Mm -hmm. I was um, the past two years, but not this year. So I taught the uh, uh, piano group class and also um, music fundamentals for non-majors. Um, I think I did enjoy uh, teaching the students. It's definitely a new experience um, for me. So somehow I'm a teacher, but I'm still learning from the students. Um, I think I'm, I enjoy uh, teaching non-majors a lot uh, because I got to share um, my passion and why I love what I'm doing uh, because fun music fundamental is not just about learning music theory or you know learn the notes this is half note this is whole note I think uh, it's, it, it doesn't mean anything if you just learn knowledge but it's, it's, um, it's to teach how you enjoy music um, what does music mean like what's the emotions or pictures associated with um, this music? So I think I really got a chance to uh, share what I love. So I hope hopefully the students, um, you know, got um, had a little bit of fun. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm sure they had a lot of fun. <laughs> but the next question I wanted to ask is, um, so it must have been a big decision kind of kind of coming to Houston from New York during COVID. Um, so could you tell me what that experience was like, like getting started with your DMA program at Shepherd, um, uh, like right in the middle of the pandemic? 
Right. So, um, I remember during the summer break before my first year at Shepherd, um, it was everything was locked down in New York. So I got to practice the piano a lot. So I have I have a bunch of organ music, but no pedal uh, because organ, we have to use our feet to play the pedal board, right? Um, so I just l- learned the manual parts only. And then I add a pedal later when I had an organ in Houston. So I would say it was a productive time somehow because you don't have to worry about running around and uh, work, right? You just purely focus on your study. So I think I think I just try my best to get as much as I can out of that um, situation. Yeah. I see. I'm glad it worked out like that. Um, and then my next question is, how do you envision your career will evolve upon completing your DMA? Right. Again, I've been playing at churches. Um, I think still I... Uh, we imagine I will continue playing at churches um, to share my talent and, um, you know, serve, serve uh, people. Um, and I love teaching, so teaching piano, sure. Um, also, I love accompanying. So, like, um, I am accompanying a choir at a high school. So, you know, they have a choir and they sing uh, in their daily chapel and they have Halloween concerts. They have uh, Advent Chapel for Christmas. So they have different kinds of activities or events. So I really enjoy doing those things. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and then kind of um, transitioning into questions more about um, your career. Um, mm-hmm. So um, I guess you touched upon this already, but could you elaborate a little more on how you came to pursue organ performance specifically in church settings? Um, And also how did your experience vary between different churches across New York and Houston and also just like um, between, like across different individual churches? Right. Um, How I got into organ is um, there was a class, uh, organ class offered to non-majors, so I took that class, and uh, in that class, the teacher taught us how to play hymns, um, or what was the organ construction, stuff like that. It's just very fascinating to me, um, and then we we had uh, organ uh tours so just go to different churches and see different organs because each organ is different so I mean at first I was not good at playing an organ at all but somehow I enjoy play, <laughs> practicing on it I think is it's I think playing organ is a little bit like um, dancing you have to use your four limbs to play and um, I love dancing I mean I don't dance a lot so I think somehow we're gonna fulfill um, my <laughs> love on dancing, also sacred music. Um, yeah. So in terms of different churches across the country, you said. Yeah, across um the different churches you've played in at New York and Houston, and just um yeah. Yeah, I think um. In terms of Episcopal churches, they are about the same. So I I was the Oregon scholar at Grace Church in New York City. So that was a Episcopal church. And in Houston, I've been playing two Episcopal churches. So they are high church. So, uh, you know, the music program is really great. They have professional choirs. So um, I think they're about the same. Um, well, it just... Uh, church. Uh, I mean, the music program probably varied uh, among denominations. Um, like for example, Baptist churches, they love uh, worship bands. You know, piano with uh drums. Um, Presbyterian um 
can be piano or organ, both. Um, but I've been playing uh, at Presbyterian churches before, so I play with guitar, string quartet, uh, read a chord chart. Um, those were very fun. Yeah, so I'm very grateful that I had um, different experiences. Yeah, that's really interesting that it really varies across denominations. Um, and my next question is, what does your typical Sunday look like as a church organist? Right. Um, depends on the church. Uh, so if, for example, Grace Church in New York City, it was very, very intense. So in the morning, uh, two, there were two services, or probably three even. And then there was, there was an evening service at 6 p.m., and during the week, they have Wednesday service. Um, and sometimes they have even song Sunday. So if I play everything, like, you know, from more early morning till maybe 7 p.m. And each service, sometimes the music is different. So it's just very intense. Yes, sun Sunday is probably the most. Uh, it's the busiest day during the week for church musician. Yeah, also during Christmas and Easter. Yeah, I'm sure it gets really busy during those holidays. Um, my next question was, um, where would you say some of your biggest inspirations come from? Um, when it comes to like interpreting, practicing, or performing music. Inspiration, um, I would say recordings, you know, go to live concerts or um, listen to YouTube recordings, that's fine too, that's fine too. Um, definitely teachers are very important. Um, what else? Oh, I think I love listening to uh, ensemble music like big choir or symphonic orchestra i think somehow it just inspired me a lot um like i prefer ensemble than solo uh, concerts so i i just really enjoy like the uh, mass of sound um and then different colors in orchestra it just really ins inspires me um yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, how often would you say you attend like those performances, like a symphony concert or other ensemble concerts? Um, I used to go to concerts a lot, but not <laughs> now. Um, but I listen to them online. Like, um, there's some um, program in Europe. It's called All the Off Bach. Um, it has all kinds of um, Bach cantatas and uh, organ music, and the performers play their those music in such um, authentic way. So I've been enjoying um, listening to that. I see. Um, my next question is, who are some of your favorite composers and what are um, some of your favorite pieces to perform? Yeah, um, definitely J.S. Bach. <laughs> That's a cliche. Everyone loves Bach. Um, so when I was piano major, I love um, Schumann a lot. Um, and composer, I would say probably this two are my favorite. I see. Um... And then also, I saw that you completed a lot of um, solo and chamber music performances over the years. Um, so I wanted to ask, um, did you have any particular moment on stage that was personally meaningful and memorable to you? Um, actually, on the stage, being to be honest, on the stage, it was like dream. Like it, it was, it was. Every every time I perform, I don't think is 
uh, 100% conscious. It's a weird thing. I think it's a combination of conscious and unconscious. Because if I be 100% conscious and remember every moment on the stage, I feel like I'm just being logical and not not you know perform the music because on the stage I feel like I have to let my emotions go after I preparing them. So I think when I'm practicing, I try to be logical, but when I'm performing, I just try to let everything go. So actually, it's it's a very strange thing, like. I can't remember what happens on the stage, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a very fascinating um perspective of performing on stage. Um, yes, and my next question would be, um, uh, what would you say are some of the greatest challenges in your career as a musician and specifically as an organist? challenging um i think being a church musician can be very very demanding like you um you have to be able to play the organ and you know piano for sure um but you also have to know like a little bit of conducting so also a little bit on like vocal techniques, dictation, um, because not every church has conductor and organist. So sometimes you have to know both. But again, an organ is like singing. So again, if you know a little bit of singing, where to breathe, it really helps you uh, to play the organ. And, you know, um, so again, it just... It just I have to be very um wait I I have to know a know a little bit about everything. I think probably that's the most challenging thing. And also, um, you know, if you conduct a choir, you stand in front of a lot of people. So you you really have to prepare well, like how you do the rehearsal, you know, like how long you want to spend the time on certain passages. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's a lot of things to consider. Um, and then my next section of questions is specifically about um, like how Asian Americans relate to music. Um, so my first question is, how would you describe the Asian American community in Houston versus New York? Asian Americans, hmm. let me think. I would say, um, I don't, I'm not sure if I have a specific answer to this question, but my experience is there are a lot of um, Asian pianists. Um, so I think there's a potential that there will be more organists. Um, what I mean is usually pianists have very good finger techniques. And if they are, if they like the organ, they can transfer to, to the organ, right? So that's my path. So I, I somehow I have the vision that there will be more and more Asian organists. Um, so which is a good thing because again, you know, in my country, um, the, like if you look at history, like the the churches, uh, you know, the government tried to suppress the the churches. So, um, but now there are more and more international students come to the states to study. So if they, you know, study the organ, then. Um, they're gonna study some, you know, theology or church music. So that's a good chance for them to, you know, encounter um, those um, stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then kind of um, elaborating on that, um, 
Did you ever encounter um, discrimination or prejudices regarding your identity as an Asian American, um, considering that kind of like the genre of classical music and the instrument of organ itself are generally perceived to be um, more Western? Yeah, I would say what I've been learning in the States are all Western music. Um, so as I I can't remember I learned any you know Asian cultures, um. But that's understandable because um, uh, you know, Western, uh, culture is heavily influenced by Christianity, and because I'm a Christian, so it is it's fine. It's fine for me. Uh, but um, in terms of discrimination, I think in general, um. I feel like I treated uh, fairly um, and I feel like in the States it's very simple that I just, you know, work hard and just focus on my artistry and um, people will respect you or respect your hard work. So I think um, in general, um, like in, in my profession, I think I've been treated fairly. Yeah. I see. That's great to hear. Um, and then my next question is, how do you think Asian Americans have contributed to the classical music scene in the States? Um, and what are your thoughts on like the representation and experience of Asian American musicians in the United States? Right. Um, again, there are a lot of um, Asian pianists and, you know, they are really good. So um again i feel like maybe there will be even more asian organists because now i can see the trend <laughs> um like they they are um, piano major first and then they switch to organ so there are uh, several cases uh, around me um are like that so again, I feel like um, agents are really hard uh, working people. So, you know, keyboard is not an easy instrument. Key keyboard instruments are not easy. So, you know, as long as you have patience and you work hard, you'll be a very good musician. Um, but also, you know, you have to emerge to the Western culture for sure. Um, but yeah, I think I'm very positive. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. Um, and then my next section of questions is more about your um personal identity. And so I wanted to ask, um, when and where do you feel most at home? When we're most at home? Um in my experience, I think uh, my American friends, they're very, very friendly and they're um, very, they're willing to help. So I think I have very good impressions um, with them. Um, and at home, so I think, I think I feel comfortable uh, living in the States um, and the most comfortable thing um i mean i love the church community again like um because we worship the the same god and you know um and people try to love each other despite where you're from so um probably church but but again you know americans are are friendly so i feel comfortable outside the church as well yeah, that's great. Um, and then my next question is, what do you feel the most proud of? Most proud of? Um, I think I just grateful for what I have right now. Um, I think everything is a blessing to me. Um, maybe I... I'm proud I'm a shepherd student. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, then my next question is, how do you want to be remembered? So whether that's as a musician, as a friend, a mentor, or a student, um, 
yeah how would you like to be remembered um I haven't thought about this question uh yet but again as you just mentioned I just realized I have different identities um but I feel like if you have a you know good personality or you're easygoing person or if you're friendly um uh that applies to any identity so what's your question again what's your most comfortable uh like how would you like to be remembered by others oh remembered um I think I just want people to remember my music, I guess. Yeah, I feel like a good performance people will remember. Or did they just remember that feeling um, that evoked in their heart? So I think, yeah, remember my music probably. Or just remember that moment, you know, they feel uh, calm. I think that means a lot to me. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, and then are there any um extracurricular activities that you enjoy engaging engaging in? So any hobbies or sports? Sports. Um, sometimes I play the tennis with friends. I rise, but I never learn tennis. So, um, I I enjoy walking a lot. Um, sometimes I run. Um. And uh, I love travel. So, you know, as church musician, sometimes I travel to other places uh, to to play. I think that has been very enjoyable. That's great. Um, Do you have a favorite place that you travel to? Um, So last, no, this year, Easter, I went to um, uh, Maryland to play at the Presbyterian Church. And um, after the Easter, services um we just walk in dc you know had a tour so that was very relaxing after um a lot of music making yeah that's really exciting that you get to visit a lot of different places um and then the final section for this interview um is gonna be about kind of like advice or insights you have regarding the future generations um, so my first question is, do you have any words of advice for like Asian American youth in general and also for those who are specifically um, music students and hoping to pursue a career in music? Um, well, I think for Asian Americans, you know, if if they are born in the U.S., they have a lot of options. So. Um, I think it really depends on the child's passion. So it's not the only way. And honestly, like being a musician is not the easiest way to, you know, not easiest way or, or you know, don't don't um, imagine you can be a millionaire to be a musician. So I think you just have to love the music and then you, you, you can't leave without music. Um, it sounds a little bit, you know, unreal but um I think just do whatever you love yeah yeah for sure um and also um what changes do you hope music will bring to our future generations to come so like what hopes do you have for the um, future community of musicians and also audiences yeah um well I think um Young people, they love pop music and they go to pop concerts. Um, that's understandable. Like if you go to classical music, um, probably a good portion is um, old uh, people. Um, but I would say, I would see, I, I would like to see um, the music education can be more fun um you know like you know study the piano is of course it needs hard work but um but i think the teacher should teach a student in a way that it's not just learning scales and arpeggios because those are boring um so i think um the teacher has the mission to 
uh, evoke the interest um, of the student, like, you know, again, try to associate music with pictures or with uh, emotions, just make it meaningful and personal rather than it should just um, practicing, you know, sounds very boring. Um, yeah. I see. Um, and the last question I have for you is, if you could go back in time and give a piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Younger self? Um, maybe don't worry too much. <laughs> I think everything's going to be fine. But mm -hmm. I think I'm still, um, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm not old enough <laughs> to say these things because yeah i see yeah. Um, yeah so those are all the questions that i prepared um did you have anything else that you wanted to add on um no i think i'm good yeah <laughs> you asked a lot of questions um, okay i'm gonna end the recording now